in Luke. We are in Luke 15, and we've been looking at verse uh, 20. We'll look at verse 27 and 28 now. Um, What we noticed in our last session um, was the particular phrase that the servant said to the elder son as an explanation for what is going on with music and dancing and making merry. He said, Thy father hath killed the fatted fatted calf because he hath received him safe and sound. And we made this statement, and that is that the servant doesn't know the father's motives. He didn't know the father's motives. So I want to go ahead and read verse 28 now. This is speaking of the elder son. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. Uh, Apparently the elder son didn't know his motives either. All right. Um, Can anybody see a, a, a benefit of actually knowing the motives of the father or the son or the Holy Spirit? Because it'll, it'll save a whole lot of uh, fears and doubts and what else? Insanity? Sanity? Sanity? Okay. Now we know about this. Anyway, um, and it will put you in line. And that, that's true of anybody. Anybody that you can, you really begin to know their motives, you can fall in with that. I'm not, you know, I mean, you know, you can, you can bank on that if that's truly their motive. People make decisions all the time that are not necessarily out of motives uh, unless it's just selfish motives. Well, I'm going to go over here and not go over there. Well, this will be more fun than that will be more fun. Well, this will benefit me more than that will be. That's, that's a deep motive of self. But how many people even recognize that many, 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 and, you know, I, I, would, I would go ahead and say most, if not all, um, Unless you're in a church like this, and then every once in a while you know you have to do something. <laughs> every once in a while, not for self, you know. And so, and uh, and I appreciate that once a year thing that you that you do. <laughs> but um, to know the Father's motive, um, and here's the thing: they they may have never. You know, the elder son may have never may have never seen uh, the father in relationship to the altar, in relationship to sacrifice. He, they may have never really noticed that. I mean, surely because he's the head of the house, he offered sacrifice. But they may have never really seen um, because the father may be doing that out of the joy of what he's made of. Do you understand what I mean? The heavenly father, the, the reality of what he's made of, he offers. But the sons may have just looked at it and said, well, this is, this is what we do. This is our religion. Which you and me can do that same thing. Well, this is what we do. This is religion. You know, and this is this is our brand of new creation religion around here, (laughs) stuff like that, which is just an abomination to God. But anyway, uh, um, because we we don't want to find the teaching and the theology or the the terminology of new creation fellowship, and then try to fall in line with that. We want to find if this is if this is of God then it's based on certain realities out of God's heart, out of the Father's heart, out of Jesus' heart. It'll never do anyone any good just to figure out the, the, the terminology and just to figure it, because it's, you know, we, we kind of do things in a certain way. Um, as far as, it'll never do us any good as far as um, really, really understanding our Lord and our Father and the Holy Spirit. And Jesus as our life. Jesus as our life. The motives of our life. We're going to get those there in him, not here in our motives, because we're, we're wrong. We're selfish. And, and we will choose for self, especially when push comes to shove, when the 
when the crisis comes, we're going to cover our own rear. And so um, the elder son, and my, my point of all this, saying all this, is just this reality that they probably never noticed anything of the father's heart in sacrifice. In other words, it, let's just take it out of the context of actually going over and putting some wood and then lighting it up and then putting something on there and you know killing it and putting it on there and cutting it up and, and all this and, and him worshiping. Let's take it out of that and let's put it into a real situation where the father's motive is the offering that he offers up through him. So he's continually doing stuff that benefits the son. The, the younger son says, Father, give me. And he, he lays down his life and he gives it to him. The elder son says, you know, I ain't going in. And he goes out and meets with the elder son. Constantly offering up, constantly a sweet savor, if you will. And the son's probably just thought, well, I've got a good father. Or, you know what I mean, I've got a good father. Come on. Really, God is good all the time. I, you know, you can, you can yell that all you want and feel good, but you are eventually going to get in a situation where you're wondering if God is good. Well, he's more than good. God is God all the time. Why don't we say that, you know? <laughs> and... There's going to be, you know, all things are going to come your way, and he's not going to stop it. Some are good, some are, you know, bad or hard or whatever, and he's not going to stop it because his primary goal is not, is not to get you back to Arizona with your girlfriend. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. His primary goal is to get Christ formed in you. I was like, that's good. I know it How, when do you leave? <laughs> you don't have that problem. Yeah, everything's <laughs> this is what we're preaching against here. <laughs> that very thing. Thank you for diverting from this down here. You are the, you are the one. You can have your girlfriend. And I understand you're going soon, right? When? How soon? In the morning. In the morning. <laughs> well, for sure, for sure now. Yeah. Well, anyway, good. Yeah. And be blessed. I was only kidding. Okay. Except, I'm not kidding about above everything else, God wants his son formed in you and you and you and you and there's no hope for this side. But you got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, you know, the servant is saying, he's saying this is the motive of the father and he's wrong. And that's why the servant is under tutors and governors. That's why it talks about that in Galatians chapter four and verse one through six. That's why it begins with that and begins to say that God is using circumstances. And that's the tutors and governors. They're the elements of this world. Not the elephants, but the elements of this world to, to uh, deal with you and me. And, and, uh, and so what we're doing is we're fighting those things. We're fighting those things. We are resisting and, um, and we don't know. And, you know, I've shared this before, so I, it's almost like I don't even want to say it because you've heard it enough and still fight. You know what I mean? But it is... There has to come a place where we go, bless God and everything I'm going to give thanks. Bless God, all things. That, 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 that. And I'm going to just start marking it. Here's the newest thing. That's meant to conform me to the image of his son. Yes. And, and quite frankly, and I don't want to get into it, but um, right now, but this journey in the story, both of the prodigal and of the elder son. And I can, I can, I can prove this, but I'm not going to try to prove it now. I can prove this. 
This journey of the prodigal son and the elder son was meant to be a journey of the son living in them. Was meant to both of them. The big failure isn't, I fell in with harlots and I won't go in. The big failure is that where's the son? And, and I, so I'm just, you know, I'm just dropping that, but um, we may very soon take a little turn on this and take this story and, and, and baptize it into some other stuff. And, um, and we may see a deeper, yet deeper reality and maybe even see exactly what Jesus is referring to when he brings this up. Maybe even see what was on his heart and, what he, and the way he saw things. Okay, so, um, so only the son really knows the father. See, there's no man that knows the father. No man, only a son. If that son is formed in you, then the son knows the father and he knows his motives. But at no juncture do you have all wisdom and all understanding and all ability to know what to do at any given time. That, and that's not even the goal. You know, in, in Christianity, a whole lot of people's pursuit is they want to get spiritual enough where they don't need to ever check with God because <laughs> they know what to do in any given situation because they're spiritual now. And they know, you know, they know how to handle, you know, their situation. Your, your situation, come to me. I'm mature. No, that's not maturity. And, and Galatians 4, uh, 1 through 6, especially verse 6 and thereabout, um, begins to explain that maturity is the spirit of the Son coming into, because you are sons, you all remember us, because you are sons, then God is going to eventually send forth when you have passed through tutors and governors to such a place that you're, you're not after the things of God. Give me your wisdom. Give me your power. Give me this and that. That's the prodigal son. Give me your goods. And again, when we get them, we're going to pervert them because we're messed up. We're going to turn them inward. And that's exactly what he did. And then when he didn't have any of the father's goods, God saw to it that no man would give to him. And we're, you know, we go, well, God must hate me. No, no, God loves his son. God must hate me. No, God loves his son. Okay, now, just that right there. If we just actually figured that out, we would go, you know what? I don't have to go through anything, whether it's, whether it's condemnation or this or that, because it's not about me. I'm not condemned. I'm condemned. <laughs> right? I'm not condemned. I'm already condemned at the cross. You know? The, the father wants the son, and all you do is you step out of whatever your junk is, and you step right in that place. You know, I, I, remember, I remember when I was, even before I went to Bible school or whatever, I remember uh, it seemed like God would start moving, you know, somehow or in a meeting or something like that. And then people are, like the elder son, people are standing on the outside over here going, well, why didn't God, you know, and, and it, what came to my mind was, it's pouring down right here. Get, you know, elder son, get out of your place and come over here. This is where it's at. Well, the, the where it's at is the son, the father and the son. You get out of you and you step over here and you say, well, I don't have it together. I mess up, but I know you love your son and I'm on your side. Hallelujah. Right? I'm on your side. I'm going to be with you, you know, because all that you are, he's trying to get rid of by the cross. <laughs> now, not your personality, clearly. I mean, you know, I've had people come up to me. I remember we were doing a conference down in 
Nicaragua, and we had a couple of thousand people, and they were, you know, and I was saying this very thing, well, God wants to, you know, get rid of us, and then he wants Christ formed in us and everything, and a, and a guy came up, you know, and he, he said, well, you know, is he going to just get, you know, is he going to take away our personality where we're just zombies? And I said, do I look like a zombie to you? And he, he went, hmm, no, not at all. In fact, you look more alive than anybody else in here. Because he works through you. He works through you as a vessel. Your personality, you as a vessel. But it's got to be his son. His son. The son knows the motive of the father. The father knows the son. And didn't Jesus say that? You know, no man knoweth the father but the son. And so we go, well, I'm going to know the Son. Well, okay, the Holy Spirit is going to reveal the Son, but once you reveal the Son in you, it's different. And when I was seeking Christ to be revealed in me, I remember, I remember I would go, oh, God, I want Christ revealed in me. Oh, God, reveal your Son. And one day it hit me, and I went, you know, I, you know, I'm praying that, going, I want, I want, I want. And I said, God, I keep saying I want, and uh, I'm making it about me, and it's, uh, it's selfish in some form. And he said, that's okay. Once you see him, that'll all be crucified. <laughs> and I went, oh, praise God. You know? but then I want your son. <laughs> I mean, it's a blessing because it just takes all the burden off and takes all the, you know, the heavy load of fear and doubt and stuff. And it just makes your heart, it purifies your heart. Remember when Jesus talked about if your eye is single, if your focus is single, but we're, we're like, you know, we look at the lamb and we go, oh, he's got, you know, seven eyes or ten eyes, whatever, so I can't remember. And he, and and, you know, that's us, but not with his lamb eyes seeing everything. That's us going, oh, I've got that and this and that and look at that and da, da, da. And our eye isn't single. It's not set on the sun, and the sun will get us to the father. And the father will go get his son out of you. Yeah, the father will go get him. He's looking for him. He's in expectation of the coming forth of the Son out of you. He created all things so that, you know, just read the book of Hebrews, so that the, the Father may have sons in the image of Christ. And so for me, when I recognized that and I saw, um, I saw the, the, uh, the really focused motive of the father was always toward his son i stepped there in that place where he could deal with me over the son instead of deal with me over me and that that became glorious all right so then verse 28 and he was angry and would not go in therefore his father came out and entreated him and so we get angry angry over something somebody they did this or da da da, da and i'm not going to I'm not going to go to their class, or I'm not going to go here, or I'm not going to listen to what they have to say, or I, I'll tune them out when they do. We're not, you know, what if God is actually dealing with them as a prodigal and bringing them into the sun, and you could be brought in too? Come in. Here's where it's coming down. Here's where the fountain's falling down. No. No, I, No. It'll make, it'll make the, it'll, it'll puff the prodigal up because he'll think he's better than me, but I'm the elder. And, um, and he will, or it'll make me look smaller. It'll make me look less important. Do you want the Lord or not? Do you want the Lord or not? That's the deal. And if you don't want the Lord, stay out there then. You'll never get him. You'll never get it. You'll never, you'll let, and, and I'll tell you what, you know, when I was at Berean, you know, J.W. would teach, and it would, back then, he was way worse than he is now, and people would go, well, I don't want to be around him, you know, because he's, you know, this and that, and he's hard, and he's this or that, and I, and, 
And I said, you know what? I, I don't like it either. I'm completely opposite in my nature and my way than he is. But I think he's got Jesus, and I'm going to go there. And I'll put up with whatever I have to put up. And I became his assistant pastor, so you better believe I had to put up with a lot of stuff. Back then, it was way worse. I'm not talking about him now. He's just a sweet little pussycat now. Uh, yeah, he's snuggly. And, you know. In fact, he wears one of them snuggle things. What are they? <laughs> Well, I know he chapped me a lot, but anyway, that's it. Um, so, um, well, let me just read this. Sadly, God has to go out to where we are in our attitudes that are so contrary to his nature and make him sit through that with us. And then I said, uh, I, I wrote, after, after I would say this, then I would say, we may feel a little shame now, but we probably will do that to him many, many more times. We stay being the elder. We won't go in. So, leaving you on a happy note. <laughs> Let's pray. Father, there is wonders in your heart concerning us coming into the sun wonders it is extremely colorful compared to our little black and white world of elder sun land and it is so your desire that none miss this uh, that we enter in with you but see, we can't see you because we're too busy focusing on the failure guy, the prodigal. And we can't see that you're there and you're not with us in that way. And we, we just resist our pride, our self, and we allow it. We allow it to continue and to continue. We never make a stand. Lord, help us to make a stand. Help us to make a stand against ourselves and go to you and go to you, Father. Go to you, Jesus. And, and you're so faithful, Father, and Jesus, the way that you are, to go out and entreat us and say, look, I'm telling you, I want you to come in. Come be with me where I'm at instead of always dragging me out here with you where you're at. Come be with me. I desire it. I want it. So, Father, I just ask that you um, never relent. And I know your heart toward your son, so I know you're not going to give up on us. You want your son. That'll never change. You're waiting on oneness. You are waiting on oneness. And so we, may we find that place in your heart that you want oneness, you want us to be with you stronger than we want it, way stronger than we want it. So bring us in, Father. Somehow bridge the gap. Break down our pride. Throw your arm around us and walk us into that oneness with you, rejoicing in your son. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.